Mr. Tom Harris. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Speaker. Um, can I begin by saying I have a great deal of time for the Honourable Member for East Worthing and Shoreham, uh, who may or may not be about to leave the Chamber as I stood up. Um, I would have been proud if the work that he did as Children's Minister, particularly in the area of adoption, had been done in the name of a Labour government. And I was disappointed to see him leave the front bench, although presumably not as disappointed as he was. Um, and he has started through an excellent speech uh, to open my mind uh, on this particular issue with his arguments, although no, I'm not yet convinced, but I'm happy to support new Clause 16 as amended. When we legislated in this House ten years ago, uh, we stopped short of legalising same-sex marriage for the simple reason that it was considered a step too far. We didn't legislate for civil partnerships because we had reached a perfect form of institution, a perfect alternative to marriage. We stopped at that point. We deliberately and intentionally created something that was not as good as marriage because we didn't feel politically we could have got that at that time. Now, we did that for the best reasons possible, and it was a huge step forward, not just for gay couples, but for the whole nation. I am extremely proud to have voted for civil partnership legislation, but let's be honest about what they were. They fell short of marriage. They were second best because we couldn't get as far as marriage. And that is why, a decade later, we are debating this reform. In a perfect world, a reform that would have been introduced long before now, the case for allowing same-sex couples to marry is not that they've been denied it so far. The case for allowing people of the same sex to marry is that marriage is better than a civil partnership. Let us ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. Well, I'm grateful to my honourable friends, um, and I don't think that um, many people who have entered into very successful and happy civil partnerships yeah, yeah, yeah. would agree at all that they're in some way second best yeah, to marriage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And whilst in 2004 we might not have known where the journey would lead us, I think that nine years on we can see that the civil partnership legislation has been extremely successful in its own right and ought to be celebrated. I was busy. Um, I accept what my honourable friend is saying, but let me ask the question. Had we been able to legislate for same-sex marriage ten years ago, if same-sex marriage was now in the statute books, would we be having this debate today? Would we be spending more than a few seconds debating whether or not to introduce civil partnerships for straight and for gay couples? And, of course, the answer is no. Like every other member, I've received many letters and emails warning me that legislating for same-sex marriage will in some undefined way undermine the institution of marriage. I take a very different view. I believe that the real threat to marriage will come from the continuation and extension of civil partnerships uh, for heterosexual couples. As things stand today, the legal security and recognition offered by marriage can only be enjoyed by straight couples. The legal security and recognition offered by civil partnerships can at the moment only be enjoyed by same-sex couples, and that, I hope, is about to change. But needlessly telling all couples that they can now opt for a second best arrangement that nevertheless offers all the same legal privileges and protections as marriage will surely undermine marriage itself far more than extending the qualification for marriage to same-sex couples. From the day that this legislation before us becomes law, the choice offered to all couples will be the same as that offered to all straight couples before now, either get married or don't. It's your choice. And I also believe that because we have indulged in this debate, we have failed to address an issue that so far hasn't been addressed at all. There are many individuals, most often but not always women with dependent children, who need to be offered more security where they're living with a partner and perhaps depending on him financially. But if that other partner is unwilling to commit to marriage, he will probably be equally reluctant to enter an alternative arrangement which offers the same level of legal and financial responsibilities. What their partners and the families need is some kind of passive legal recognition, perhaps similar to what used to be known as common law marriage, a state that used to prevail in Scotland but which since 2006 no longer does. Moves to make civil partnerships available to all might on the face of it look like a progressive move but it will do nothing to help those vulnerable women and their children who are in relationships with their partners simply 
who simply refuse to bind themselves with legal red tape. As for those who have already entered a civil partnership and do not wish to enter into the state of marriage as provided by this bill, I have to say it should not be beyond the wit of this government or this House to frame legislation that would recognise each existing civil partnership until it is dissolved or legal, uh, or either legally or by the death of one partner while preventing any more civil partnerships being entered into. The Honourable Member for East Worthing and Shoreham says he wants full equality. I concede that making uh, civil partnerships available to straight couples is one way of achieving that. Another way is to make civil partnerships available to no one. <laughs>